about paleontology, that is fossils, the more certain we are that evolution is based on faith alone. This statement is a lie because we, as we see in the fossil record, there is a progression from primitive traits to more advanced traits. No faith is needed. The National Academy of Science is the official advisor to the U.S. government on questions of science. In its publications, it falsely claims that the missing links that troubled Darwin are no longer missing. This is misrepresentation which deceives millions because after 120 years of exhaustive searching, Darwin's missing links are still missing. Calling the missing links is wrong. They are truly transitional fossils. There are hundreds of transitional fossils found throughout the world. A few of those are Australopithecine afarensis, Archaeopteryx, and Tiktaalik. Those are three of my favorites. Yet this academy and evolutionists continue to perpetuate the mythical theory that man developed from ape-like creatures. The National Academy of Science keeps talking about evolution because there's evidence to support evolution. There is no evidence to support creationism. Richard Leakey, who is one of the most uh, well-known anthropologist said that if he were asked to draw a family tree for man he would just have to draw a huge question mark because the evidence is too scanty to possibly know man's evolutionary origin and he didn't think we're ever going to find it I highly doubt that that's what Richard Leakey would have said I don't doubt that we he said that he would draw a question mark for our evolutionary past even today we might draw this question mark because there's too many hominids to pick from but the statement I'm pretty sure Richard Leakey didn't make was that we would never find any more hominid fossils. We found many just in the last few years. National Geographic magazine, which doesn't attempt to hide its evolutionary bias, admits that these fossilized footprints are identical to human footprints. Yet artists take the liberty to accommodate evolutionary theory and illustrate ape-like features to fit ape-like creatures. All because biased dating processes insist that these footprints were found in rock layers said to exist before humans. First off, National Geographic is a magazine. It is not a scientific journal. Its articles are not peer-reviewed. Second, the Latoli footprints, which is what they're referring to here, have been potassium argon dated to 3.7 million years ago. The only hominids that we know of that were around at this time were A. afarensis. The Latoli footprints also show that whoever made them had an abductive big toe. A modern human has an adductive big toe, which means it's in line with the rest of the body. Also, when you look at the pressure points left in these uh, footprints, they show that whoever made them had different pressure points when they stepped from modern humans. Ramapithecus. That was formed out of nothing but a fragment of a jaw and several teeth. And for many, many years, Ramapithecus was held up as our ape-like ancestor. But now Dr. Pillbeam at the Yale Harvard Peabody Museum, when I interviewed him, he said, we have found about 40 of these creatures now, some of them fairly complete, and they are not on the direct line to becoming man at all. They're more like an orangutan. Dr. Pillbeam of Yale, who first claimed that Ramapithecus was an ancestor of man, now suggests that it isn't. Yet evolutionists continue to cite Ramapithecus as an ape-man link. When Ramapithecus was first discovered, it was thought to be on the hominid lineage because it had thick enamel. We now know that thick enamel is a trait that most Miocene apes had. Also, Ramapithecus has been reclassified as Sivapithecus because of new discoveries in Pakistan. No modern anthropologist would refer to Ramapithecus because it simply doesn't exist. Another so-called missing link, Java Man, was concocted by Eugene Dubois when he found an ape-like skull fragment and then 50 feet away he found a human leg bone. However, just before he died, Dubois confessed that he'd also found two human skulls at this same location and he admitted that the skull fragment belonged to a gibbon and not to an ape man. Java Man is better known as Homo erectus. Homo erectus is found in Africa, parts of a Europe, and most of Asia. Homo erectus also is one of the best known hominids in the fossil record. Dubois, who first discovered Homo erectus in Java, did confess later in life that he thought it was a gibbon, but the only reason he did this was because he was pressured by English scientists 
who are still under the influence of Piltdown Man. This hoax is still accepted by evolutionists today, and it's presented to the public as a true missing link. Homo erectus is by no means a hoax, and it is presented to the public as a true transitional fossil because it is a true transitional fossil. If you think the Java Man hoax is incredible, wait until you hear all the facts surrounding Johansson's Lucy, this little three and a half foot adult skeleton, which looks just like a chimpanzee. Lucy is an Australopithecus afarensis. A. afarensis has several things that are very different from a modern chimpanzee. One of these differences is that modern chimpanzees have large canines. No A. afarensis has large canines. Also, modern chimpanzees do not have a valgus knee like A. afarensis. Modern chimpanzees' iliac blades do not point forward like an A. afarensis. Johansson said even though this is a very ape-like creature, it walked upright. Well, the pygmy chimp today wanders around in the rainforest walking upright almost all the time, so that doesn't prove anything. Bonobos do not have the morphological adaptations for walking bipedally that A. afarensis does. That is why when they are observed walking bipedally, it is for short distances and very clumsy. Actually, the only features of Lucy which even hint at erect posture are the knee and, and hip joints. Dr. Charles Oxnard, with a sophisticated computer analysis, has concluded that Johansson's claims for the hip are unfounded, and it must be pointed out that the knee was not even found with Lucy. This knee joint was found over a mile away, 200 feet deeper than the other bones. The hip of Aafarensis brings the iliac blades forward. That means that the lesser gluteus muscle would have attached at the side. The only reason that this would have happened is if it were trying to balance a creature that was walking bipedally. So, for the iliac blade to be pointed inwards, it would have to have erect posture. Lucy does not have a knee joint, and this has never been hidden. The knee joint that they are referring to is AL129-1. This knee joint showed that the lower leg and the upper leg met at an angle, which is what we find in humans. This angle in our knee joint allows us to walk bipedally. This clip also makes it sound like Lucy is the only A. afarensis that we have. We have several different specimens, including Lucy and AL 129-1. Richard Leakey and others are now claiming that in all likelihood Lucy is really a mosaic of, of two or more species. This isn't funny. What is funny is that they claim that creation isn't scientific. When anthropologists claim that A. afarensis is a mosaic, they are making a point that it has very ape-like features and very human-like features. Misrepresenting people's arguments is one of the reasons why creationism isn't seen as a science. Uh, the next thing back was Piltdown Man. I will address Piltdown Man and Nebraska Man at the same time. First off, Piltdown Man was a hoax created by English scientists because they wanted the origin of humans to be in England. When Piltdown Man was actually put under the scientific method, it was discovered to be a hoax by scientists, not creationists. Nebraska Man, on the other hand, was discovered to be a pig, and it was never thought by the scientific community to be anything more than a pig. One scientist thought it might have been a hominid tooth, and nobody else did. The pictures that you see of Nebraska Man were made by a magazine and not by any scientific journal. Neanderthal Man was originally found in the Neanderthal Valley of Germany. These creatures almost all look very modern, but several of them, two or three, had a very stooped over, brutish appearance. Now, however, two scientists have gone over to the museums in Europe from Johns Hopkins University, got these bones out of the museums and x-rayed the ones that had a very stooped over appearance. And lo and behold, they discovered that the stooped over creatures had rickets or some vitamin D deficiency disease, such as arthritis. They have reclassified the Neanderthals from a separate species, now put them back into Homo sapiens, the same as modern man. Neanderthals range mostly in Europe and parts of the Middle East. Postcranially, they are very similar to humans. Cranially, there are a lot of morphological differences. Some of those differences are that Neanderthals have an occipital bun, they also have larger brow ridges, and modern humans have a chin where Neanderthals don't. Another difference that is very apparent is that Neanderthals have larger brain cases than modern humans. Some specimens of Neanderthals that we find do seem to be suffering from arthritis. 
but arthritis would not count for all these morphological changes in the cranium that separate them from modern humans. Behind closed doors, or occasionally when speaking very candidly, the evolutionists admit there is really no evidence that man evolved from the apes. Is this guy kidding? The fossil record is littered with hominid fossils from the last common ancestor between apes and humans and modern humans today. I gave many examples in this video.